The Mani to walk 18,000 has a lifting capacity of 600 tons or 750 tons with the Maxa attachment. In its full configuration, it can lift to a height of around 180 meters. The model is shipped in a big outer carton, and inside that is a plain white box, and that contains the trays which have all the model pieces in. Getting the trays out is a little bit awkward because of their size, so if you're not personally configured with four hands, it's best to make it a two-person job. The top tray consists of a number of boom and ballast parts, and tucked down the side is a manual, and we'll look at that later. The second tray has got a couple more big pieces, and you can see that they're mainly pre-built already in the box. And when that's lifted out, the crane and the Maxa attachment sits in the bottom. There's a little bit of unwrapping to do because both the crawler tracks and the wheels on the Maxa have some shrink wrapping, which you need to take off. There was one damaged part on the review model, and that's easily fixed back on. And in fact, it helps to have it off when it comes to fixing the Maxa later. The assembly manual is a good production with a good parts list, although it doesn't cover all of the different screw types. And the photos and instructions are easily followed. There's also some reaving diagrams at the end, and they are pretty good too. One nice inclusion with the model is a toolkit, and that comes in its own little box, and you've got a pair of scissors, a little handle for winding the winches on the model. And in the second tray there are other parts including pliers, screwdriver, and superglue. Also included, if you want to make a fashion statement, is some white cotton gloves. Before starting the assembly, it's good to try out the crawler tracks, and they are so smooth. And crawler tracks don't get any better than this. Some of the reaving is done, which is good, but it's already bounced off some of the pulleys, so there's some sorting out to do. And the foam will be left until later. The first thing to add to the model is four assembly jacks, and they just drop into place at the front and rear of the model. Which looks fine, but they can't be used in any sense, because the crane can't really be disassembled into its component pieces. This model first appeared in 2005 with brass boom sections, but this version now has die cast booms, and they certainly are very straight. It's also nice that the individual parts of the lattice are tubular. The connection method for joining the boom sections is very strong, and it uses positive screwed connections which give a lot of confidence. Another nice touch is that both the screw heads and bottoms are painted, so they blend in well with the rest of the boom sections. The struts for the luffing jib are permanently attached to the main boom, so you can reeve those up by tying them together and then running the thread out from the drum. The thread then runs through a couple of pulleys to get it outside of the boom sections. And it is one of the nice details of the model that the pulleys have all got spokes, so they're quite pleasing when you actually pull the thread through and see that all the spoked wheels move. The thread then goes to the boom top with the tweezers proving quite handy. When you get the thread to the end of the struts, you've then got a happy hour of trying to follow the ins and outs of the reaving diagram. After swearing and kicking the dog a couple of times, you've then got the luffing jib struts reaved up. You can then follow a similar process for the luffing gear for the main boom. And one way you can do that is to remove the luffing bridle and fix it to the end of the fixed mast. And here at Cranes Etc, we secure it in place using a high-tech, custom-designed, precision-engineered solution of an elastic band. Once it's all temporarily rigged up, it's then fairly easy to reeve it up, again following the instructions in the assembly manual. With all the preparations done, it's time to get on with the assembly of the model, and the first thing to do is to load up some ballast plates between the crawler tracks. And follow that with the plates at the back, and these are all nicely made metal parts with lifting lugs that can be used. And there are also rungs that form a ladder as each plate of the ballast is added. To increase the lifting capacity of the crane even more, extra counterweight is added on a special carriage at the back called the Maxa. And this attaches with a pinned connection, which is a bit awkward, so you need to use the pliers. And this is where the detached walkway platform actually helps, because it makes it slightly easier to do the pins up and then attach the platform afterwards. With the wheeled carriage attached, there's then another round of weightlifting to do. And by this time, you're now starting to produce really a quite a heavy model. 
To attach the fixed mast, you need to take out the rod that secures the moving mast in place, and then you can drop the fixed mast in and reinsert the rod. It takes a little bit of jiggling about, but once it's through, you can just put the nut on the end, and that secures it, and then you can rest the fixed mast in position. All of the straps on the model are metal, and they're a bit soft and easily bent, so you need to be a bit careful with them, and they join up just by using the small silver screws that are supplied. The fixed mast has one pair that join to the crane and another pair which go to the top of the maxa. The small silver screws are way too loose for this connection but you can use boom screws if you ream out the holes a little bit. To attach the main boom you just offer it into position and it's good to use a small screwdriver or something just to line the holes up before you insert a screw on each side and then put a nut on the end. One other thing that it's best to do at this stage is to take the hydraulic lines that come down from the winch motors and plug them into the front of the crane. The straps from the luffing jib struts have to be attached to the bottom of the boom and they seem too short at first but if you pull them really tight you can get a screw in. Every crane needs its operator's cab and this one fixes into position and it's secured in place using a very long screw so it's not going to come off anytime soon. The last item to fit at the top of the crane is the luffing jib and that secures into place with another of these axle rods and by carefully lining it up you can push that through and that gets it into position. Once the final connections are made you can spend another hour or two reeving up the hooks and then you've completed the assembly of the model. And at this point it looks very impressive, it's about 1.7 metres high and as long as you've got the space for it, it poses very well and looks great. However, a particular strength of this model is in the detail. The metal tracks look great and the track frames even have tiny chains and hooks. And there are excellent mesh stairways leading up to the crane deck. The cab is very high quality with Manny to Walk printed on the seat back. And another great detail is the tiny warning signs on the back of the cab. The paintwork and graphics are very sharp and there's plenty more really good metal walkways. All of the pulleys are metal and inside the body a plastic engine is just visible. At the rear the Maxa has the same high level of detail with plenty of hydraulic hoses and really good looking tyres. The lower boom looks busy and complicated with the winch drums and the hydraulic hoses. The boom top looks impressive although the silver nuts and bolts would have looked better painted. One issue with the model is that the geometry of some of the parts is still not quite perfect. So for example in this case it means that these pairs of straps are not equally under tension and so they don't hang quite perfectly. Also on the review model the small jib for the whip line is not made very well and sits slightly at an angle. The main hook though is a nice piece, it's all metal and it's got a swivelling hook on the end. And all of the pulleys are metal and perfectly free rolling. Here at Cranes Etc we take great pride in having a clean machine and the team will go to any lengths to keep things sparkling. The cab has got a couple of nice features, it tilts to a good angle and can maintain the pose. But not only that, it also has a sliding door. This works well and it just gives you some different posing possibilities. The winches in the body are operated using a supplied tool, but the fact is that most of the winches have no meaningful break, and so there's no improvement over the first version of the model. The wheels on the Maxa go round and round, and they're also on swivelling pivots so they can be angled to point towards the crane, so they facilitate the crane towing it along if it needs to change location. There are four stabilisers on the carriage, and the pads can be lowered by just pulling down the cylinders. They're not screwed, so they have smooth surfaces and look quite realistic. And up on top of the Maxa, the strap connection is spring-loaded, which is quite nice. With the whole crane assembled, it can be made to rotate smoothly. And that includes the Maxa attachment, which just moves with the crane's rotation. One design decision that's not been changed on this version of the model is that really it can only be assembled in its full configuration. And that's because certain connections are riveted when it would have been quite easy to make them disconnectable. This applies to the moving mast which has got some riveted straps. And one connection on the luffing jib strut is riveted preventing its separation. However you can drill those rivets out and that gives you much more display flexibility. So here's one I prepared earlier which shows the crane just rigged with a short main boom. 
And of course you could rig it with just a long main boom if you wanted. There's no doubt that this is a very detailed and impressive model by TWH. It looks great but functionality is not its strong point, although a skilled collector can probably improve its flexibility. If you want a really detailed big crane model, then this one is outstanding.